This will be a quick tutorial on how to properly set up detents on the Mongoose 50CM2 throttle. When you first fire up your control panel, you'll see something like this, this kind of layout. Go ahead and click the Create New Profile button just to make sure you start off on a fresh setup with nothing in uh, any kind of binding setup in the throttle. Note, this will wipe the contents of your throttle, anything you have set up on it already. So back it up, back up your old file or start when you just get it before you do any sort of customizing. Next, you're going to have to click the Pro button up top, and I recommend you also open the Debug menu so you can see what's currently being hit on the throttle. Not a requirement, but useful. Well, I'll go ahead and go to the Axis page. We're going to do some things real fast, and I'll explain as we go. First, we'll double click on the number 7 Axis. We'll make it a service. We'll make it VPC Sense port 1, sub port 0, Sense Smoothing 2. Calibration is going to be no center for now. We'll go ahead and save and next. Again, service sense, sensor. This time will be main PCB port 2, zero sub port, smoothing in 2, invert, no center, save. Just created two virtual axes that we'll be using for button presses later. Now we'll go ahead and calibrate axes. What we'll do now is we'll move everything through its full range of motion with the exception of the main throttles. I will not be moving them past the idle cutoff detents I have physically installed on the base of my throttle. Right now my throttle is configured essentially like the Warthog Hotas was, where you have to lift the finger gates to move it over the idle detent. I do have a push through afterburner detent at the top, but that's more for my own personal feel. So again, calibrating the throttles, do not lift them over the idle cutoff detent. However, all the other axes, the flaps lever, the little mini stick, and the radar elevation axes, move them through the full range of motion. Once that's done, click Save Calibration to Profile. Okay, now that's reloaded, what we will do is we'll now individually calibrate the virtual axes we made. Double click on the virtual axes and click start. This time you'll want to move the throttles through the entire range of motion, including lifting over and all the way back through the idle cutoff detent. Once you're done with this one, click stop, save and next, and same thing on the right one. Start all the way forward, all the way back over the detent forward, back over the detent, stop, save. We'll have to save it to VPC device as well. Now, what you will see is you have two axis outputs. These are the real ones that DCS World will buy into and see the first two. These are the fake ones. All the way forward, they're both reading 100%. If you move your throttles back to the idle detent, but not over it, you'll see the real ones read 0, while the virtual ones read 16. Now, if you move your throttles in and into the idle cutoff, everything reads 0. The reason why we do it is as follows. This allows you to bind this properly without having to mess with any curves in DCS, because 0 is 0, 100% is 100%. We utilize these axes by opening them again and clicking the axis to button range on 0%. What this will allow us to do is have a button output when your throttles are in the cutoff detent so that DCS can use it to kill engines or start engines as required in game. We'll also go ahead and take this opportunity to find the flaps axis, which is axis number three. Double click that and set axis to button on 0, 100% and 41 to 60. Since most modules in DCS do not use an axis to lay, raise and lower flaps, so these three outputs will let you bind it to any aircraft you can. You can get your hands on, essentially. Once again, save to VPC device. We'll now click the button menu on the, on the left. 
This is where we convert the buttons we just made into actual buttons that will be bindable and seeable in DCS. Ignore everything on the left side of the window. The only thing we care about is this table on the right. We'll go ahead and start with the cutoff with the cutoffs. Scroll all the way to the bottom and then move your throttles into the idle detent. You'll see moving the left throttle triggers button 76, moving the right throttle triggers button 77. So we'll double click over here, 76, normal, zero, everything else is default, save and next, and 77, normal, everything's default, save. So now if I move throttle, left throttle into idle and right throttle into idle, these buttons will work. When you bind it in DCS, it will be labeled as button 61 and button 62. Next, we will do the same exact thing with a flap lever. All the way up is button 74. In the middle is button 75. And at the bottom is 73. So we'll start at the top. 74, save it next. 75, save it next. And 73, save. So as I move the flap lever from the top, middle, down, middle, top, you see all the individual inputs getting triggered. Last but not least, this is more. This is no longer part of the tutorial, but a quality of life improvement that I liked for my own throttle is you'll notice the red levers, switches on your throttle base only have one actual output despite having two physical switch sensors. So if you scroll up to the 40s up here, you'll see that the buttons are only triggered when the switches are in the up position. This is fairly easy to fix. For instance, the topmost right hand switch, we'll go ahead and click on this line, right click, click insert, then type in 41, save. So now this switch will trigger a button that will press on either the top or the bottom position. Same thing with the next switch. If you look down in the debug pane, also on the left, you can see what physical sensors are triggered when you move the switch. So over here, it only outputs on 44, but it triggers 43 as well. So again, right click, insert, 43, save. Next one, 45 and 46, right click, insert, 45, save. And this one's 47, 48, right click, insert, 47. So now every single red switch has corresponding two positions that it outputs from. You can do this to the silver switches as well. The software allows you to do more things such as trigger button outputs when something is not triggered. For instance, you could trigger this one on inverted. You could toggle it. There's a lot of things that you can explore on your own. I just This is just a basic tutorial on detents. After that, we'll click Save to VPC Device. Now we can select the throttle in any sort of testing software or in DCS and you will see throttles full forward gives you 100% output. Throttles at the idle detent but not through it gives you 0%. Putting your throttles into the actual detent triggers 65 and 66. Taking them out turns off the inputs. Moving the flaps, flap lever through its range of motion triggers 67, 68 and 69 buttons while also triggering the axes and every switch has two separate buttons that it triggers based on its position. And that's it.